הגר בן אשר, שלום. And welcome to culture buzz. Agar, I believe you deserve uh, congratulations. Thank you. You have probably made uh, some kind of history in Israeli uh, cinema life or the world of uh, cinema with your new film. And I would like to ask you, Agar, uh, the film is quite dairy when it comes to, how should I put it, the Israeli taste. And you, be, you, you deserve lots of credit for being so courageous. Mm. So how did it all start? Um, first, I think I'd like to say that Um, I did not aim for this to be neither courageous or provocative and I think that um, the film got the cinematic language that it was asking for and um, and from my perspective I did not create this in order to um, Um, challenge the, the Israeli audience or, um, or to, to have a statement regarding the Israeli audience I think that basically I made a film and, um, and I think that uh, the Israeli cinema has been developing so much and I think I'm a part of this um, development and change as for cinema all around the world is changing therefore it changes here as well Um, so I did not have uh, this uh, um, particular goal to, to, to change or, or have an impact on the history. You don't know that. You can know that at this time being perhaps 10 years from now we can say yes, this was a moment. But I think I'm part Agar of the movement. Agar Benasher made history. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it's a part of, uh, of a movement and I think that Many directors now are allowing themselves to um, to to break the the very classical way of telling a story a cinematic story and um, I have seen the film yes we, 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 we didn't even mention the name yeah. uh, it's called in Hebrew Hanotenet it was translated uh, to English as the slut yes although Hanotenet has more than one meaning in Hebrew yeah. But uh, probably in slang, that's, yeah. that's what it means. Yeah. I've watched the film, and I must say, I was very impressed, first of all, by the opening scene, a very powerful. I can't recall seeing anything like it. <laughs> Good. So, really, uh, congratulations. The other thing that struck me, Many things struck me, but the other thing that struck me that you gave up using music, yeah. with one exception, yes. a wonderful song. If I'm not wrong, is it Bracha Tzfira? Yeah, bravo. And if I may ask you, Agar, can you relate, first of all, to the opening scene, which is one of the best I've seen, and I'm not only referring to Israeli film, and also for giving up music. Um, well, the opening scene for me is in many ways um, the, the whole film in one Concentrated. sequence. Yes, in one sequence. Um, I, won't, uh, I won't destroy the experience of watching for those who haven't watched the film yet, but um, I think that this animal that's escaping its boundaries and until the bitter end of it, um, it is for me practically the, the conclusion or maybe the symbolic element of, of the whole story but more than anything this horse becomes to be um, a lead role in the film. I mean we have our male character Shai which is Uh, mending and taking care of it and making him healthy throughout the film. Right. And, uh, 
shy the veterinarian. Okay, yes, and I think that um, that that's why he's not only a symbol, but he's also a character, a character. for me, the horse. It might win an Oscar one day. I was hoping, or <laughs> him, or my dog. Um, <laughs> Which is also wonderful, I must say. Yes, she is. <laughs> And, and what the, about the music? the music? The lack of um, music. Yes. This was intentional. Of course. Um, I, th- I think that... Um, for me there is music in the film because I think that the sounds that nature creates is um, for this film far more beautiful because the landscape and the nature and the animals are a very uh, integral part of the film and, and I wanted to, to, to use them as the sound platform and not impose um, my taste in music or what I think is a melodramatic music and, um, and I must admit that the, the music in cinema is something that uh, many times disturbs me as as a viewer, as a oh. spectator, and um, and I always feel as if I'm being manipulated. And I mean, everything is a manipulation, obviously. But but with music, it's it's more difficult for me. Mm-hmm. And um, and and the use of that song in particular is. Um, Bracha Tzfira, as you said, it's, it's, it's a beautiful song. The legendary Yeah, the legendary Bracha Tzfira. And, uh, and I think that um, it was me trying to bring the old Israel into the film as, as well as I used old houses and old scenery and, and uh, it's, it's less um, um, shiny as today's Israel. And the song does the same thing for me. It takes lots of effort making a movie. Yeah. How was it for you? First of all, how long did it take for you to make this dream come true? Oh my God. Um, I made a short film, Pathways, in 2007. That's my graduation film. Um, it was in Cannes Film Festival, and then I got this scholarship for writing the script, meaning I started writing the script for an Atenet or the slot in, uh, in the very end of 2007, beginning of 2008. Um, and then it took around three years to raise the money. and. Um, Unfortunately, we shot only for 21 days, which is That's a it? joke. Yes. It's unbelievable? Unbelievable. One day they will say, Hagar Ben Asher made history for, twen- more, for more than one reason. Yes. <laughs> 21 days. Amazing. Amazing. And I was acting in it, which is a very time-consuming element, because we had to, I had to act, watch every take, go back again. It, it, it's very... Um, very demanding. Yes, very demanding and very um, logistically difficult. So not only in the film, some may say you push yourself to the limit. Yep. Not only as the heroine, but exactly. also as the director exactly. and the actress. And it's true. It's true. It was um, a very, very rough and tough process. And the technical doing of the film, after you finished shooting, how long did this take? Um, we edited for seven months, I think. Um, although my editor, Asaf Korman, had the baby in the middle. And Mazal tov. Yes, and so he had to be with his wife. So we took a break of a month and then... But that's, a, I guess, a part of the process anyhow. It was all done in Israel? Yes, here. Actually, oh, okay. <laughs> and um, and afterwards, um, I mean, that that's the main thing. After, I mean, mm-hmm. the editing was about seven months, and then mm-hmm. um, post production. That's it. And if you had to choose, a, let's say for the next film, what do you enjoy more, directing, or playing? 
or does it seem natural to you that you can do both? Um, for the next film I'm just going to direct it. I'm mm-hmm. not acting in it. It's, uh, the heroine is a very young, I mean about a 20 year old girl. And, um, but not because it was traumatic, but um, just because this is the story I want to tell this time. So, so we have something to look forward to? I hope. <laughs> When can we expect it out on screen? Oh God, I hope that soon enough. I hope it won't take four years again. Really, I really, really hope so. It seems better already because um, people are interested and I don't know, I need to knock on something. I hope it will be faster. <laughs> Hagar, uh, when you look around, at the Israeli film industry, at the Israeli cinema, cinematography world, how would you describe it? Hmm. I, I, I mentioned it before, I think that more than anything it's evolving. Um, because, because I think that there is a new voice coming out of directors and um, something very interesting is happening I don't know if you know but in the last two years there have been made around 30 films each year which is impressive numerous unbelievable unbelievable when you think about the size of Israel exactly it's unbelievable and many of the films are films who are made in an independent way completely or without money or private money or not funded by the funds yeah. um, and for better and for worse um, it changes the industry um, I, I, I think that there are aspects where the cinema is being hurt and damaged by this fact But uh, I think it also gives new opportunities for, for new film directors because as a first feature film, it's very hard to do a first feature film. Um, people don't trust you and etc. And um, it's very interesting to see where it will go. Mm-hmm. Uh, we forgot to mention that uh, Anno Tenet uh, uh, has won a few prizes. Yeah. Uh, one of them was Khan festival no it was it, it participated in Khan okay. the Semaine de la critique okay uh, which is the most beautiful thing and um, and it won in Jerusalem the best director in Jerusalem yes and it's now being presented in cinemas yeah. all over Israel yes and I'm sure since you have participated in the Khan uh, At festival there is interest from countries all over the world yes. so what can we wish uh, Agar Ben Asher yeah. and Hanot Enet? It's actually it's, it's been doing well very very well abroad it's been sold for already almost 13 or four, 14 territories around wonderful the world. yes including the United States and Japan Excellent. And France and Germany and Brazil and many others so, so I, I, so I, I see many trips abroad <laughs> I in have. the future it was no it was a very uh, this year I was uh, in many 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 places it's been a dramatic year excellent yeah Agar Ben Asher I want to thank you very much for thank taking you. the time thank you. and to wish you all the best in the world thank you